Okay, good evening, good evening, good evening everyone. Welcome to another live stream lesson. This evening it is electromagnetism, everybody's favourite. Um, along the side you'll see the syllabus for this evening. We're going to take a look at how to build an electromagnet. Um, if you're a junior pupil actually this will be really, really useful to you. You'll do this in year 10, um, but this is something that's on both the double award and triple award courses. How to make electromagnets, how to make them stronger and how to get them working. Right. After that, we're going to take a look at generating electricity um, in terms of electromagnetic induction. Uh, that's a six mark question. It's a big question. Um, it's almost certainly going to be asked in one form or another on both the triple award and double award courses. Uh, so that's what we're covering then. And then the last one is the hand rules. Um, no jokes in this one. There are a variety of right hand grip rules, right hand wire rules, left hand, um, left hand Fleming's rules for triple award that need to be understood. Okay, so uh, we are getting into it now. We have uh, we have twenty thirty one on the clock, so that's half an hour starting now. Let's get to it. If I want, well, let's start with basic magnetism. Basic magnetism is I have a magnet uh, looks a bit like that, and at one end we have a pole that we call the North Pole, and at another end we have a pole that we call the South Pole. If I can get my clicking working. Right, now, uh, first mistake people make is they start talking about magnets and they start talking about positive and negative. Uh, if you start talking about positive and negative and magnetism, you've got it wrong. End of story. All right. Magnetic field lines uh, are a way of visualizing the force. Uh, magnetic field lines flow out of north around your magnet and back into south. Okay, that's out of north around your magnet and back into south. And they don't cross over. Um, they never cross uh, for the, re the reason being that the magnetic field lines show the direction of the force that acts and you can't have a force acting in two ways uh, from the same object okay so that's that's a bit silly and you get a nice little butterfly pattern out of that uh, you rarely ever asked to do that um, so it's it's not worth taking note of but just to be aware that we have a few rules about magnetism um, north will repel north and north will attract south south will repel south so like poles repel each other unlike poles attract each other. So it is similar to statics in that respect, but that's about it. Now, um, normally you dig magnets up, you make them out of stuff, um, you try and find natural magnets, but sometimes we want to do a little bit better than that. Sometimes we want to make magnets uh, b because we want to be able to turn the magnetism on and off. Or we want to be able to make magnets that are stronger than the magnets that you find in nature. Um, and to do that, we can use electricity. Um, and that's what electromagnetism is broadly about that when you have electricity you will get magnetism and when you have magnetism you can get electricity. The two forces are linked um, to each other and if you study them at degree level you do study them as basically one thing. So uh, in order to make um, in order to make an electromagnet what you need is you need a couple of things. First of all you need a core. Okay so something to actually um, wrap your wire around because you're going to run some, some wire around this. Now your core can be air uh, though it's a ridiculously bad choice, it, it can be done. Um, you don't have to have a, a solid object in there. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to use gradient fills, because everybody loves a gradient fill. Um, just makes everybody, everybody a bit happier in the day. So there we go. Um, and we're going to make this out of um, the best material that we possibly can for a, for a magnet. And that material is going to be soft iron. Okay, so a soft iron core is the best um, way to make an electromagnet, especially in the lab. Now, soft iron, as the name uh, might suggest, is soft. That's not true. Okay, there's no such thing as soft iron. It's like easy to you know. If you get hit by this, it's going to hurt. Um, it basically refers to it, it, its magnetic properties. Like it's magnetically soft. It's going to uh, it's going to take on magnetism very very easily, and it's going to lose magnetism very very easily. And that's exactly what we want. That is precisely the qualities that we're after. So then I go and get some wire. Now wire um, wire in the lab is usually kind of a red color. So we'll go with red um, and all we have to do is take some wire and wrap the wire around my iron core. Like this. Now again I'm drawing with the mouse so I have the drawing skills of a four year old and that's a lie because my, my, my six year old son can, could do better than this when he was four. Um, but I have the drawing skills that I usually have in, in real life. But anyway, hopefully we get the point. Uh, the point is that we take this wire and wrap it round and round and round and round and round and round, round. Yes, Scorpion, we will be doing solenoids too. We'll be doing that in about five or so minutes time. All right, so uh, we grab this and we need to put some electricity around that. So the best way to put electricity uh, around some wires is to grab a battery. Okay, so if I grab regular battery, um, 
first years in the in the chat, you'll have done electricity uh, reasonably recently. Okay, so here we go. We've got ourselves a battery. Now, fifth years, we should be able to label the polarity of this battery pretty well. Um, that this is the big stick, so it's the positive end of the battery, and this is the little stick, so it's the negative end of the battery. We've got positive to negative. So if we take a look at the conventional current that's flowing here, we'll do that in red. Conventional current flows from uh, positive to negative, or current as it's otherwise known. Uh, we know that electron flow actually goes the other way, but current flows from positive to negative. So the current comes out of here, um, up there, up the front of the, um, of the so iron core, down the back, up the front, down the back, up the front, and you end up with this kind of upward arrow pattern all the way along here. Just like that. Okay, then it comes out the bottom and jobs are good. Alright, so uh, let, let's make this magnet as strong as we possibly can. So what we really want to do here is go, right, well, what can we possibly do to make this more powerful? Well, we've already got a soft iron core in, so that's good news. Um, the second thing we can do is we can really beef up the voltage, okay? So we can increase um, the voltage that's being supplied. Now, it's not really the voltage that matters, believe it or not, it's, it's the current. But because current and voltage are related to each other here, um, you know, an increase in current, uh, will increase the or an increase in voltage will increase the current because Ohm's law. Uh, we can increase the voltage, therefore the current. And the other thing we can do up here is we can put more uh, turns of wire on. Okay, so we can wrap our wire tight together and use loads and loads and loads of it. Uh, and what this does is the process of the electrons as they travel round and round and round through here. Uh, the the way that they travel, because they're looping round and round and round, they're kind of doing a spiral all the way along this, spiraling up and over and up and over and up and over and up and over. What they do is they generate a magnetic field. And they generate a magnetic field that looks very, very similar to that of a bar magnet, um, in that it comes um, out of one end and rotates round. So it comes out of there, flies back round and back in there, and out of here and back round and back in there and you end up with this kind of cool symmetrical pattern going on and it acts exactly the same as a bar magnet. But we've got a problem. Uh, we've got a problem here which is that um, which way is north? Like on, a, on a magnet it's reasonably straightforward. Um, you know you just look at where north's labelled or where it's coloured or where it's coloured in a school magnet but what if we actually want to find uh, where north is? We've got a couple of options. Um, option one is we can bring in an actual magnet. Okay, bring in a regular magnet um, and get a little north pole going on. And then what we want to do is we want to bring this magnet over here. That should have gripped. But let's try that again. There we go. Uh, bring that over here. Now, if it pushes in here and then gets repelled out, okay, if it gets pushed back, if you can feel a force against it, then this end is north as well. If it comes in and sticks then you haven't actually proven anything, and this is important. You haven't proven anything because this is soft iron. Um, a north pole is going to stick to it anyway, whether it's a south or not. So it's only when it repels do you actually have um, information. So if this end repels, then it's north. If you bring the north pole around to the other end, flip it over, um, and then push it in there, and it repels, then that ends north. All right, that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is if you have, if you know which way it's all set up and you have this, then you can use something called the right hand grip rule. Right. Now, the right hand grip rule involves imagining that you're holding on to this system with your right hand. Um, and imagine, so kind of like this, so grab it with your right hand, check out the graphics, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you, I thank you. Um, Imagine that you grab this thing with your right hand and imagine that down the back of your right hand are a series of arrows that run out of your wrist and up over your fingers like this. Okay, so this is especially true for, uh, for our triple award students in tonight. You, you need to know this. You absolutely need to know this. Okay, so imagine this uh, like this. Now, if the arrows are pointed in the same direction as the arrows you've drawn on the front of your soft iron, um, soft iron core, when you stick your thumb out, the thumb points in the direction of north. So this end is north. Just like that. Nothing to it. So, okay, so this is a right hand grip rule. Imagine you grab onto the solenoid, or not solenoid, sorry, if you imagine you grab onto the soft iron core with your hand 
um, with your with imaginary arrows running down the back of your wrist, out over the, over your fingers and round curling around your to your um, to your nails. Then when you stick your thumb out, the thumb will point north. Happy enough. All right. Now, um, just to just to prove this works the other way around, uh, let's draw a really quick. Um, let's just quickly adjust this diagram. So let's let's rub out um, our power supply um, and put it in the other way around. Okay, so I'll get some decent lines for this one. So we're going to put our battery the other way around. I'd like to rub out those blue ones, but that's going to mess everything up. So we're just going to put in my new arrows um, in a different color. We're going to put them in, in green. Okay, so in this case, my current is traveling out this way, up this way, up the back of this, and now it's always pointing down the front. Okay, so it's they're all pointing this way. Is the green coming through okay? I hope it is. It looks okay on my screen. I hope it's looking okay on yours, especially if you're on mobile. It might be a bit funny. All right, so in this case, what I need to do is I need to imagine that I'm grabbing... Um, grabbing it again with arrows running down the back of my hand um, running towards my fingertips the only way I could grab that with my right hand would be as if I was to grab it from behind um, so if I was to grab it from behind just give me a second to get the, the little pre-prepared graphic um, if I grab it from behind in here grab it like that then again my arrows are now going up the back of my hand and coming down the front of my hand so I need to grab the actual arrow tool so that matches what I see on the front of my green arrows, they're all pointing downwards, uh, and I stick my tongue, uh, stick my right thumb out, and this time north is at the other end. Happy enough. So that's the right hand grip rule for when you've got a magnet and you want, or an electromagnet, and you want to decide which end is north. All right, so let's go back to that a second. Uh, let's let's draw ourselves another one, so a slightly le uh, less cluttered diagram. So we'll just grab that, um, draw in a couple of wires here. Do -do -do up like that and then we want it to come out like that and we'll wrap the wrap the wires around. Don't want to spend too long drawing because we're under time pressure to get stuff done tonight. Okay so lots and lots of loops of little wire and away we go. Now the cool thing about this is that we can play with it that we can play with it using AC electricity. So rather than using um, Rather than using uh, a DC power supply like a battery, we could use an AC power supply like your actual plug at home. And we can go like that. Okay, put in an AC power supply. Now, the cool thing about an AC power supply is that the current's flowing one way one minute and then another way the other minute. Uh, so what can happen is that as, as it switches backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, as the current switches direction backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, then the North Pole here, um, one minute it's north up here, and south down here, but a fraction of a second later, it's a south pole here and then a north pole here, okay? which gives the effect of like it's almost like a magnet spinning without spinning. And that's going to be a really, really, really useful property when we come to discuss um, transformers. So, but we're not going to trans discuss transformers uh, just yet. We're going to do that in a couple of weeks' time. This is a big topic, electromagnetism, and it's certainly not getting compressed into the next 16 minutes. Okay, so uh, we'll leave that for now, and we'll just stick with our electromagnet. So, we want to make a strong electromagnet. We use a soft iron core. We increase uh, the voltage or current, and we get loads of turns of wire. And that allows me to create magnetism using electricity. Right, now, I want to go the other way around. What if I want to use um, magnetism to get electricity? Rather than using electricity to create magnetism, we're going to use magnetism to create electricity. All right, so what I need for this is I need something called a solenoid. Now, solenoid sounds like a very fancy uh, word, but essentially uh, what a solenoid is, is it's a box of some description. It's a little hollowed out box. Now, once again, bad diagrams are on, are on standby for tonight because this is just going to be a bad diagram evening. But... Uh, let's get ourselves a little hollowed out box and what we want to do is we want to wrap some wire around this box okay in exactly the same way that we did with our um, with our electromagnet okay except this time it's not it's not a sold iron core it's just um, a nice piece of nice piece of kind of empty metal probably okay and if I was any good at perspective drawing I would have known to keep those parallel at the top and, and back. But anyway, um, we've got this type of thing going on. I've got a box that's that's well wrapped up. And connected into that box, we're going to put in um, a little ammeter. 
Okay, an ammeter. And over here, I'm going to draw sensibly uh, a circle that is what the ammeter shows. And we're going, to, we're going to use a super sensitive ammeter. We're going to use an ammeter that actually has a little dial on it as opposed to a digital ammeter. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to make um, out of this uh, material, we want to put um, a magnet into it. So we need a second, we need a second terrible diagram of a. Oh, I don't know why I decided to try and do this perspective. This was just stupid, but um, I could have done this 2D and it would have worked out so much better. But anyway, uh, let's get this little magnet. Oh, guys, that was quick enough. Um, and let's imagine that this is the North Pole here at the far end, and this is the South Pole here that I'm looking at. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this magnet to make some electricity. I'm just going to fill this in um, just to show that, it's, that that's, that's empty. And this may be a good point for gradient filling. Um, all jokes aside, this would be exactly where you want to use a gradient fill, maybe a little bit of transparency. Oh, gorgeous. Right. So we're going to uh, push this magnet in towards this solenoid here. Okay, so we're going to push that that way. All right. Now, as I push this towards it, what happens is that the magnetic field or the magnetic field lines slice, slice their way through the wires. Um, that's the technical term for it. What's really happening is the little electrons inside all these wires, because the wires are packed with electrons, remember, um, feel the presence of this magnet. And they themselves act like little magnets. And one of two things happens. They either go, oh my goodness, yay, look at that wonderful North Pole, let's go that way. Or they go, oh my god, no, look at that horrible North Pole, let's go the other way. One of those two things is going to happen here. But either way, what happens is my little electrons move. And that's the important thing that as I push this magnet towards here, electrons move inside this wire, and they move in a consistent direction. So as a result, as I move the, um, as I move the magnet towards this solenoid, towards this hollow box that's surrounded by wires, the ammeter will jump. Okay, it will go from being at zero, which is up here at the top, um, up to some value. Now it doesn't have to jump left, it could jump right, but we'll call this positive here. Uh, just for the sake of it, and we'll call this side negative over here. All right. Now this is uh, this is disturbing because suddenly we're creating electrical energy, right? and and the law of conservation of energy has to apply. So if I've put energy, if I've generated electrical energy, it has to have come from somewhere, and where it's come from is the kinetic energy in my magnet. That as I move my magnet, kinetic uh, kinetic energy in the magnet is transferred to being electrical energy in the circuit. So provided this moves, I will get some electricity, some current. If it moves quickly, then um, I will get lots of electrical current. If it moves slowly, I will get a small amount of electrical current. If it's stopped, and this is critical, I will get no electrical current. Okay, and that's important. That's really, really important. If it's stopped, the, the dial is at zero. Okay, we, we catch loads of people with that as examiners. It stop, the dial is at zero. You can't get energy for nothing. So if there's no kinetic energy, then there is no, um, then there's no electrical energy either. Now, when the, um, when the magnet's inside, if it's still moving, I'm still getting deflection, but normally when it's inside, you, you've got it stopped, and it's at zero. As I pull the magnet out, then the exact opposite is happening. Um, imagine a situation where all the little electrons have got, oh my god, that's a horrible North Pole, get it away from me. As the magnet is pulled out, they start to relax, and they go, ah, oh, the North Pole's away, and they realize that they've actually ended up crammed up together with other electrons that they hate. So they end up relaxing back to um, where it started. So um, as she said in the, in the chat, what if it's stopped? If it's stopped, okay, if it's stopped, there's no kinetic energy. And as a result, the the dial is at zero. You can't get electricity out if you're not putting any kinetic energy in. All right. So once we pull this out, uh, pull this out of here, then the exact opposite process is happening. Rather than the electrons being crushed up together, uh, for example, then they're relaxing back to where they were. In which case, they all move, but in the opposite direction as before. So your needle jumps to negative, and you get a negative spike on that. And then once you're far enough away for the magnet not to be affecting it anymore, that will again return to zero. And once the magnet stops moving or is far enough away, it will sit at zero. So the critical things we have here, because this is a six mark question usually, um, you have a few points to get. To get. One, um, 
as the magnet moves in there is a momentary and they like that word momentary deflection um, on the ammeter. Now notice I've avoided actually saying which direction because you're not expected to know so don't shoot yourself with this. When the magnet is stopped the ammeter reads zero. Okay, That reads is important. And then finally number three as the magnet moves out there is a momentary deflection I'm probably off the bottom of the screen here yeah it looks bad so we'll just move that up there's a momentary deflection on the ammeter the opposite way okay um, and normally speaking that's enough to get you six marks the word the word momentary uh, is generally worth a mark each time um, then at is, the ammeter is at zero gets you marks as well okay now things to things to bear in mind things to bear in mind one faster movement equals bigger deflection and that makes sense uh, bigger only has two G's though it's not that much bigger so uh, faster movement is bigger deflection again that makes more sense because it's kinetic energy being converted to electrical and secondly um, that uh, if you move I'm trying to get my words out here if you move the opposite pole in so the opposite pole so if I move the say the south pole in first um, equals the opposite effect so if, for example, I was told in the, in the question that the North Pole moved the uh, reading to the right, then you could say that the South Pole going in will move the meter to the left. Okay? So if the North Pole goes in, it moves the meter to the right. The South Pole going in will move the meter to the left, or vice versa. Either way, it's the other way around. Okay, we clear enough? Nice one. All right, um, if you do a harder movement, um, then what happens there is that's that's essentially faster okay when you're saying harder you're pushing it harder it's going to move faster um, and therefore as a result um, you get more um, you get more electricity out you get a bigger deflection on it happy good good okay so on the on the way up um, on the way over we go to the next one uh, which is our various rules now we've already covered the right hand grip rule if you're double award at this point you're done um, that's that's your kind of stuff that you need to know about basic electromagnetic induction triple award you need to do a little bit better uh, you need to be able to do a couple of a uh, couple of other things right um, let's see first thing you need to be able to do is imagine I have a, like a piece of cardboard like this with a wire running through it. So we need to fill this in white because I don't want it transparent. So if I've got a wire coming up through um, a piece of material and then it is then connected to some form of power supply over here, then you need to be able to predict, uh, first of all, which way the current's going. So that should be straightforward enough. And then because of that current, you need to be able to predict what type of magnetic field you're going to get. Now you're not going to get a magnetic field like a bar magnet. You're going to get a different shape magnetic field for this one. Okay, so once again we label our positives and negatives. So this is the positive side of our battery, uh, and therefore this is the end that current comes out. So current is going to come out of that side and travel round. So let's grab ourselves a little arrow tool and make it red, so that we can see it. So current is going to come this way, travel along here, and travel up through here, um, up out of here, and there. Okay, and we need to be able to figure out what way our magnetic field is. Now, the magnetic field in a long straight wire is circular. Okay, um, and that's kind of difficult to draw on this, but that's not bad. Okay, so you get a kind of circular magnetic field, and you get concentric circles, one overlapping the other, overlapping the other, kind of like that. Um, apologies for the terrible diagrams. Doing this live is um, exactly no fun. Though anybody who I teach will know that this is probably high standard compared to my usual diagram skills but you get these kind of circles like this 
Uh, what you need to be able to do is predict which way the circles are traveling. Are they going kind of clockwise or anti-clockwise as you look at them? All right, so uh, what we use for that is we use the right hand grip rule again, but in a different way. So we grab a right hand grip uh, one more time. So I'll just paste that back in like this. And we imagine that we're gripping onto the wire. Okay, so we grip, we grab the wire with our right hand like this. With our thumb pointing in the direction that the current is traveling. And we imagine again that we have arrows running down the back of our hands and round the front of our fingers. Now the curl of your fingers this time tells you which direction the magnetic field is going. So in this case my, my curl is kind of going from the left hand side of the screen and then wrapping back round to the right coming back to the left. So we're going from the left hand side of the screen wrapping back round to the right. So my direction is going to be in this way. So I can draw arrows on my magnetic field that go from left and then back round to right. And be careful in an exam because it's very, very easy to accidentally draw two conflicting arrows. Like these go round and round and round. And that's the right hand grip rule for a long straight wire. Yes, indeed, this is indeed some high budget animation stuff. Okay. Happy? Now, um, the last thing you guys then need to be able to do is you need to be able to do Fleming's left hand rule and with a massive four minutes on the clock we are going to tell you how to do that. Now Fleming's left hand rule states that if you have a force, a magnetic field and an electric current um, that those three things have to be mutually perpendicular to each other. That sounds very, very, very fancy, but in fact just means that I have, if I have three things, then they are forming the x or the y-axis, the z-axis, and the x-axis to each other. So they're all at right angles to each other. Okay, so that's a right angle, and that is a right angle. I am telling you, I am getting better at this diagram stuff, either that or my eyesight is getting sufficiently bad that it looks all right. All right, now if you um, if you want to do that, in any way sort of quickly then what you do is you use Fleming's left hand rule which gives you an X, Y and a Z axis if you hold your hand like this and I drew this myself so check myself right? my thumb is ridiculously large I get that but you know I'm happy with that I'm happy with that now um, this forms a gun and therefore one remembers that it is the FBI that are coming to get you that's one way to make sure that my house gets raided this evening. Um, so, F is the direction of your force, okay, and it's your thumb. So, your this is your force. B, for reasons that remain that remain a bewilderment to the scientific community, is the direction of your magnetic field, uh, and it's the direction from north going to south. Right, that's magnetic field flow from north to south. And then I, down here, as we should all know at this stage, is current because electricity is not hard enough that we have to give you letters that make no sense whatsoever. And by current, I, of course, mean conventional current. Now, how do we use this? What's the point? Well, the point is, if I give you uh, this type of situation, let's, let's imagine I've got, a, I've got a magnet or a horseshoe magnet. Okay, so we're, we're going to look sideways at this. I've got a horseshoe magnet like this. Uh, and traveling through that horseshoe magnet is, is a wire. And that wire is carrying some current. So let's pop on some current onto this to give myself a nice little red arrow uh, going on here. Eh, dotty arm, dotty one maybe? Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, so dotty arrow. No, that's double hand, that's double handed arrow. That's no use. Give me a proper arrow. Do, 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 do. That end. That'll do. Right, so we've got some current going that away. Right, and let's call this the North Pole. So we'll call that North. And down here, we're going to call this the south. Now, if you're at your computer now, it's time to look like an absolute idiot. Uh, what you need to do is get your um, get your left hand at the ready and in the in that kind of position. Okay, so we'll copy that. Um, trust me, I'm doing the same at home. So we grab this and we move it into position because we're going to need it in a second. Right, my magnetic field, I need to draw that in, and that's really kind of handy. So my magnetic field flows from north to south. 
So what I need to do is I need to maneuver my hand in such a way that I keep that kind of gun position. I'm, I'm not allowed to move my fingers, it's all on the wrist and the elbow. Okay, you're just allowed to move your wrist and your elbow for this one. Okay, so um, point your index finger straight down because that is the north to south. Your index finger is the magnetic field direction. It's um, it's going from north to south. Okay, so your index finger is north to south, so it should be pointing towards the floor. Okay, then you need to rotate your wrist in such a way that with your fingers still pointing down, your index finger or your middle finger, sorry, should be pointing to the right of the screen. So your fingers should be pointing down. Uh, your index finger should be pointing down. Your um, your middle finger should be pointing to the wall. I'm trying my best to concentrate on talking whilst um, doing this myself. Yeah, it wrecks your wrist. What can you do? All right. Now, what automatically happens then is that your thumb is pointing in the direction into the screen. Okay, and that's the direction your wire is going to be forced. Okay, so what you can say here is that the wire is forced into the page. Now we might want to draw that, and how we draw that is is pretty simple. Uh, we draw a little circle, and we draw an X in that circle, like that. And then we mark beside it the letter F for force. Okay, and the reason for that is that that shows the direction, the arrow direction of the force into the page. And you go, how does an X show that? Well, remember these are arrows. So the idea is that if an arrow is being shot into the page, the last thing you would see would be the fletchings on the back of the arrow. Imagine like Robin Hood style going into the. So that's the back of the arrow. If it was coming out of the page, on the other hand, uh, what you do is you draw a circle and you draw a little dot in the middle of it for coming out of the page. Because the first thing you would see coming out of the page would be the tip of the arrow. Happy? Okay, cool. Um, well, that is it for this evening. That should cover kind of solenoids, the six mark question on that, and the various left and uh, right hand rules. The next one for year 12s, uh, what I intend to do is uh, the motor effect um, and how you end up getting spinning stuff going on. Uh, I intend to do that, but that shouldn't take half an hour. So if you've got something that you particularly want me to cover, uh, can you please leave a, little, uh, leave, a, leave a note in the comments before. If this was useful, uh, leave a like, hit subscribe, grab the bell notification so you know when, it's, uh, when the next one's happening. Um, that'd be great. And let me know, because I'm still very, very new to this um, and want to get better. So any advice uh, would be greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, everyone, um, have a really good night. Uh, oh, uh, before I forget, it should be scrolling across the bottom of your page. There are some past exam questions um, available for you. Just click the link in the description, take them there. Mark schemes at the bottom for that as well. Um, I'll see about doing a little kind of um, lesson uh, online on that one for going through the paper and the mark scheme. All right, everybody, uh, take, play, uh, take care, um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.